So uh, thank you guys for coming out this morning uh, to the Suede Men's Experience here at the Essence Festival. My name is Hakeem Holmes. I am the Vice President of the Essence Festival, and I am also from New Orleans. So today we will, uh, I'll be joined by three other men uh, that are from New Orleans, and uh, a lot of you might know them if you're from New Orleans. Uh, we have, uh, we got authors, entrepreneurs, uh, visual artists, uh, social uh, uh, promoters, and these three men uh, have a lot to say and their journeys are very different. And so I, I have the honor of sharing the stage with them. So without further ado, we have uh, Law Parker, who is an entrepreneur, uh, ma artist manager, and visual artist. We got Larry Morrow, who is an entrepreneur and restaurateur and an author. And we have Greg G. Willie Johnson, who is a serial entrepreneur, developer, and event promoter, and uh, concert uh, promoter. All right, y'all gotta check it. Yeah. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good morning. Doing? Good morning. Good morning. So, what we're gonna talk about really is uh, the journey to building an empire. And what does that truly mean to each of these individuals on this stage? What does that journey look like? And how can we share and offer that to you all? I come from more of the, the, the corporate side of things, so I'm gonna juxtapose when I throw a lot at y'all today. So uh, I was sharing a story yesterday and I realized that I don't often share this story, which is um, in 2013, it was my first time interning uh, at Essence on the Essence Festival. And 11 years later, I now serve as the vice president and someone asked me, how did you get there? And I said, I asked a lot of questions. Um, I was resilient uh, and faced a lot of uh, a no's. I applied five times before I got a yes, and I'm here. And so I share that because I know that on the entrepreneurship side, you all have similar starts and journeys in terms of what was that moment or that spark that you had where you were like, all right, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I know Law, you and I met in New York, so. Right, right, right. Yeah, so uh, even the going and coming back and how do you offer that to your community? So I'll start with you, Law, in terms of what was that moment where you were like, this is the direction that I need to take because uh, this is what's gonna propel me forward and make me feel at peace. I, I think, uh, how you guys doing? I think uh, the transition for me was uh, prior to moving to New York, it was, I would say, Hurricane Katrina of uh, being displaced with your family, trying to figure that out and trying to make sure everyone was straight, and then noticing that, that there was a, a, a need back in the city and just trying to do something back here and just making that transition back from where we were, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, and coming back to New Orleans when there was literally no one here. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what I'm saying, I was like, there's a need of trying to create something and try and convince people that it's important to come back and if I need to be like that conduit to make it happen, then I'll take that leap forward to try and at least spark the, you know what I'm saying, like the flame in it. And see, hopefully people will join in uh, later, you know what I'm saying? So that was like that big moment for me uh, because it was at a vulnerable moment when you really didn't have too many means and opportunities here or even outside of New Orleans. So it's like, okay, I'm just gonna take that leap of faith and just stay persistent and consistent and over the years develop something and hopefully, you know what I'm saying, it, it becomes something bigger. Yeah, no, I, I resonate with that. And so Larry, for you, I know you started really young. You were still in high school when you started your first business. So for you, what would you say was that spark that made you realize like, this is the direction that I wanna kinda get my feet wet in and you kinda, you know, steadfast head down, this is what I'm doing. Um, just. Quickly, just to piggyback off of what Law was saying, um, you know, after Katrina, I remember, like, I didn't really, um, I was young, I wasn't nowhere, you know, close to being, you know, where I am now. And I remember watching him, you know, he always was about community and always about, uh, about the people. So he was somebody, as a young kid, we were able to look up to. So, you know, um, shout out to you. Hell yeah. But, um, but definitely, um, I think that transition was when I was um, in high school, and then I became 20, I did my first, uh, birthday party, and with that party, I made a lot of money, and um, I literally just decided to, you know, just double down on that, drop out of college, and just pursue the being a promoter, and it was great for me at the time. Uh, it was something I learned a lot. 
I gained a lot of experience in just dealing with people and just understood more about just uh, hospitality, which is something I got from my mom. My mom was always so hospitable, so I would literally book people and bring them to New Orleans. And at 20 years old, I wanted to make money, but I wanted to build these relationships. But I really didn't know why I was so focused on just making sure I built a relationship. Uh, but little did I know, I was planting seeds, you know, at 20 years old, and now I'm 33. In the past 13 years, I planted so many seeds to where um, it has helped me grow my business. So I think that transition was just when I realized, all right, look, I'm Larry, um, I'm producing events, but I wanted to diversify what I was doing. Uh, I came out with a book, 2018, called All Bets On Me, The Risks and Rewards of Becoming an Entrepreneur. Um, and that was just like my transition from just nightlife deeper into hospitality to where I would start to, um, you know, me and my mom, we opened our first restaurant called Morrow's. How many of y'all familiar with Morrow's? Yeah, but me and my mom, she should be here somewhere. We uh, opened up Morrow's. Yeah. Well, yeah, my, there you go. Chef Chung, what's up? <laughs> That's my mom, so um, I'm, I am who I am because of her. Uh, 2018, uh, April 6, 2018, we opened up Morrow's, and since then, it's been history. We now have seven locations, uh, five restaurants, two clubs, over 500 employees. So, you know, I just invested into, I just, that's, that was my transition, basically. Yeah. Nice, nice. Congratulations. Um, now, G, <laughs> same, um, what would you say for you was that kind of spark? Uh, really, like, I enjoy the process. The, the spark side of it is when we do events and, you, you know, I always kind of like, especially when I was younger, I would be outside when everybody about to leave out. And when you hear somebody, man, like, I had the time of my life in there. I'm back on the computer the next morning trying to figure it out. Like, cause that feeling of hearing somebody say, that was the best time of my life leaving out of the event. I'm like, oh, I could do it again tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like it literally changes the way you approach things when you hear people give that reaction to something that you was produce. Like that was one of the, that was the first time I felt it was like leaving out. I did my first part in like August of 2004, which was the, well, 2005. Damn you which old. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, it changed like the feeling. I'm like, wait, they had the time of their life? Oh, after that, it was, and I still have that. Like, so I enjoy the process of putting things together and you seeing the, the rewards of people having a great time and actually making some change every now and then works. And like, like Larry said, you know, like the plan of the seeds of the relationships part, like in the, just some of the rooms that uh, you're able to get in, you know, because you've done good and right by people throughout this whole time is amazing. Yeah. So if I'm hearing all of y'all correctly, the through line is how you want to make people feel. And there's something about us being from New Orleans where we, we want to give a certain experience, we want to share our culture, we want to share certain things with people and that, is, that becomes part of the driver. So when we get into kind of uh, networks, when we get into mentorship, when we get into what that journey looks like for each of you, um, what would you say is kind of what keeps you going? What motivates you to keep going? Well, I mean, for, for what keeps me going, I, I believe is just the, the tenacity and spirit that we, we develop and we grow up. It's in our DNA as being from New Orleans. So that's something we naturally have growing up in New Orleans. So I think that's something that uh, re we love to reciprocate to others and see other people be successful. So it's something that we would naturally want to do. It's like uh, have connections, build camaraderie with people, and then also give it to the next person. And hopefully they do the same thing. So uh, in my transition from just say like the, the store in, in the French quarters probably was the first black owned sneaker store in traffic, traffic boutique then doing the, the concerts in New Orleans where I, I, would, I would bring a major artist down here but have five local artists open up that show yep. uh, to NOLA Music Awards, NOLA Summer Jam, all them different events over the years since Katrina. But the main focus was always to uh, have the local people here uh, learn the business but also see the benefits of uh, what's happening. And I mean, even uh, in the music industry, I remember I had like, even in New York, I, I had like six to seven interns from New Orleans that I, I brought up to New York to work in Rock Nation as interns for like summers. Nice. So 
it's always been that. And I, I, I think wholeheartedly that these two guys believe the same thing. And that's like the, the prominent thing about this discussion as well. Yeah. And I would say, I would add to that, which is, it's not, sometimes, I tell my team all the time, we don't plan this event for us. We plan this event for everybody that's here. Right. So when you stand in and you're looking at everybody, you're like, I'm doing this for you. What am, what am I giving to you? So I would ask, because I think a lot of times people feel like things are easy and that they come easy because they see the end result. So for you, Larry, what would you say? Uh, did you ever have that one moment uh, where you were like, man, uh, this shit is hard. Huh. But I have my community, I have my support system. So what, what for me, I know that's, that's my mama too. And so I would ask you, uh, who do you lean on um, during, when times are hard? I would say uh, who I lean on, I think, um, you know, when building a foundation, it was more so about, you know, building a community around it to support. And so my community, of course, my family, my mom, my wife, my daughter, my sister, my family has always been my biggest support system. So that has helped me, you know, grow and manifest to the man I am today. So like when I, when I think about it, just the, the transition over my life, it's been because I had a strong support. You know, my mom would show up for any and everything, always would be there. Even my, um, you know, my, my fiance, like, you know, she would, you know, I told somebody yesterday, I said, when it's raining outside, it's sunny inside my home, I'm at peace. So I think all those things are like the perfect ingredients to go out there in the world and tackle what you gotta tackle, because, you know, it's not easy day in and day night. You know, I, it's sometimes I'm at work 14, 15 hours a day. I may leave the house at 8 a.m. and get in at 2 a.m. Um, and it takes a certain level of understanding and support to be able to go out there in the world and do what you gotta do. So um, when, when building, I've been able to do so just because of my support system, which is my family. Yeah, yeah. Now, G, I'm gonna ask you, how you balance it all? How I balance it all? <laughs> That's a tough question. You don't balance it, you just do the best you can. You try to get as organized as possible and literally like, you know, being in so many, wearing so many different hats is one of them things where I kind of base my day off of like a, from eight to, I go to the gym, 6.30, seven o'clock, I'm in the gym. Out of the gym by 8.30, I'm working on real estate from 10 to one, one to, until it's party time or event time or, you know, a concert coming up or a special event weekend like Essence, you gotta kinda like scale back a tad bit on real estate and like, all right, we're doing 10 hour days no matter what on just strictly planning events like when the Essence come to town. So you have to really like, you pick your spots and sometimes, you know, some businesses have to wait for one second and you're like, all right, cool, I'm gonna put my concentration right there because that's the moment that's about to happen. So I think that's a, the balance piece. Yeah, so I would also, uh, in terms of community. So we do this for everybody around us. So why is it important to each of you uh, to do the work that you're doing and bring awareness and, uh, and to do this for the community that you're doing it for? That's for me? Yeah. Because I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> That's number easy. one all the time. That was an easy question, but uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure they agree it's like, we want to see our people be success, successful as possible. So, uh, like Larry mentioned, families, mom, his fiance, his kids. I feel the same way. My wife, my kids, my mom, my my immediate surroundings, uh, the, the direct support, and then you build, you extend that support when you you help other people, and they appreciate what you're doing, and then now your community extends and becomes even bigger. So, and then for us being from New Orleans, we are loving and kind and uh, natural giving people. So that, that community is uh, something that becomes larger than life. Uh, so, you know, from New Orleans, like we would be do something small and we just think it's super big. And we don't really uh, look at ourselves as celebrities and stuff like that because we just want to be just cool and humble people naturally. So the community is immediate, but then we look at the entire city of New Orleans, no matter for us, like we look at wards and stuff like that, sections, but we just look at as New Orleans as a whole, as our community all over the globe. Larry? What, what, can you repeat the Giving question? Back, why is it important to get back to the community for you? I think it's important because um, I think it's, um, you know, it's each one teach one. You know, when, when you have an impact on others, those others can have impact on more people. Like, for example, 
we have an employee of ours who recently just like, he texted my mom and myself and he said, man, like, you know, I just purchased my first home today and I appreciate y'all. And the whole time, like, you know, he's been working with us for a while and that was impactful to me and my mother because it made us feel like it just, it was an amazing feeling just knowing you could help someone and that we can, you know, ensure that he passes that down. So when, when you have a community, it's not just about coming here to make money like our restaurants, but it's more so about building that community that we can support. You know, it's a lot of people, people often ask why, you know, we aren't doing a mean different other things in the city. It's because we have, you know, a community within our hospitality group that we have to support as well. So um, we try to ensure that we impact those and ensure that they impact others by just, you know, not just being restaurant owners, but being mentors to them as well. You bring up a good point, which is kind of having to focus on one area and knowing that that core group and that core area is where you're kind of driving impact. So I think what for you, G, I would ask, has been the sort of driver of this is, this is the lane that I'm in and this is how I'm able to kind of continue to navigate and learn from this and do well here while impacting people's experiences through your events. Wait, come back again. I, no, that, it was, it, that was a no, long one. Are <laughs> no, you good? So I was asking, you kind of, so as you, you've, you've grown and you had that first event back in 2004, now what's the difference between the experience that you were giving people then now? Oh, uh, it's a big difference. Uh, Nowadays, you know, when we first started, we was just, I guess you would say, doing events and like, hey, y'all, come party with us. We're the cool guys, you know? And that's not, like, uh, sustainable over time. Like, eventually, you have to grow, you have to change, you have to make sure your VIP experience is different. You have to bring national artists that, essentially, New Orleans used to have a feeling of, oh, no, no, big, no big time artists ever come here. Like, this year alone, doing, I think we did, 28 concerts this year in this market with A or B list, you know, artists, that's a big deal for New Orleans on a regular basis. That had never been done with Love and Heartbreak series that we have right now. So it, it's the elevation of the people that you're booking, the way you're handling them people that continues to let everything continue to grow. And it really stay at a level for, you know, now I'm going into 20 years. Yeah. Like that's a long time to per se be doing events and then turn into true concert promotions. Cause that's like a, it, sometimes a party is a little easier, but when you got that artist that's charging some crazy amount, you gotta figure out how to make it where it's still sustainable for the people to attend. It's a, navigating a lot, you know? So if each of you could tell somebody one thing or, or inspire somebody with one last thing, what would, you, what would it be? Um. If I were to tell someone is, that's, that's pursuing in any uh, position or career that, we, that we're still pursuing and that we're still working in, I would just say tell them create their own algorithm in their life and turn off the algorithm on social media. And when I, when I mean like create your own algorithm as far as like what you accept inside of your system around you, the energy you take in, the TV that you watch, the music that you listen to, I think that you should be more intentional on those things uh, and I think that kind of like helps guide the energy and the direction that you want to pursue in your career. Because uh, social media, it's a good thing, but then it's a real dangerous thing. So I think that uh, having your own algorithm as far as like, you just can't go in and just watch like reality TV all day. You can't just listen and bring in that energy of certain type of vibes and uh, tones and stuff like that in music. So like maybe sometimes put on some jazz music or maybe just maybe listen to some uh, gospel music or something like that. So I think redirecting the algorithm that you accept uh, inside of your system, even when you're around your friends, like if it's not the vibe that you own, don't be afraid to tell them like, hey man, I don't feel like vibing with that right now. Can you turn that off? So I think you gotta be more intentional as far as like the, uh, the social media and the, the stuff that's being put in front of you all the time. Thank you. What would you say uh, to an aspiring entrepreneur? I would say um, to be confident, um, but also confidence comes in from the work you put in. Uh, I've been able to, you know, over the years, put I put in a lot of work and I've been blessed to, you know, have a lot of people around me that are doing the same. So that helps build your confidence when you actually putting in work, going to the gym and working out and you start to see the results. So, you know, it's no different in your day-to-day -day life when you're 
constantly striving to be. That's why you got your guns out on here. <laughs> but it's no different when you're constantly striving just to be you no know, great. You know, it's about you know about legacy for me and my family. So that's what we're building. So when you wake up and you have that mission that you're, you know, you, just just that 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 foundation that you're building, you're constantly striving to just be better. So my confidence and consistency has really brought me a long way because I wasn't always the Larry you see now. But as, as I started to just accomplish the small things and, you know, acknowledge the things that I was doing just internally, uh, it built the confidence for me to really walk out there and be like, yeah, I'm him, you know? And, and sometimes we all need that. And that's, has, that's helped me, you know, to get to this point where I'm at right now, you know? I received that. Um, now, what would you say, G, for somebody looking to build their empire just starting out? Right, you have to find that thing. And when I say that thing, that you wake up every day and you're literally happy to go do the work. When I say I wake up every day and I'm happy to go do something with my dad, building a house or redoing a house on the real estate side. And when I wake up, I'm looking to go build that next event. It never feels like work to me. And that's the part where and you can really enjoy what you're doing. You have to fight to find that thing that you enjoy. If you find that thing you enjoy and it makes some money, your life is going to be amazing. So fight for that, finding that thing. I appreciate y'all. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, Thank you, Hakeem. We, uh, we appreciate you. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. First time we all share the stage together. Hell yeah. <laughs> and these are guys I look up to, been knowing them for a long time, been going to his parties when I was a teenager, been going to his store. Me and you been acquainted for a while. I went to the same school. And um, right. shout out to you, you know, what Essence and, you know, you guys are doing for just the community. Because we see the impact. You know, we, we, we weren't here before, but we're here now. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 11 years to the top of EVP? That's, that's, <laughs> Look, that's, that's crazy. From intern that's where, that's where to executive work, vice man. president, I came. That's real work. Yes, sir. That's where it works, man. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, thank you, guys. All right, thank thank y'all for joining Peace. us.